What happens to a military superpower when a foreign jet shows it a battlefield it cannot survive? Britain's Tempest didn't just introduce new technology, it exposed a truth Russia never wanted the world to see. The moment Tempest AI architecture became public, every weakness inside Russia's Air Force snapped into focus. Its outdated avionics, its fragmented radar network, its lack of autonomous teammates, and its total dependence on pilots who can't process information at the speed the next war demands. Tempest isn't dangerous because of what it can shoot down. It's dangerous because it reveals a future Russia has no way to fight in. And that is the part Moscow hoped no one would notice. Tempest didn't need a battlefield test to undermine Russia's air force. Its cockpit design alone did that. The moment Britain revealed its AI-assisted pilot system, one weakness inside Russia's aviation structure became impossible to deny. Russia still relies on pilots to manually process information Tempest handles instantly. Western analysts call it cognitive overmatch, but the meaning is brutally simple. Tempest absorbs the chaos of air combat. Russia forces pilots to choke on it. Tempest's AI handles the tasks Russia still hands to humans, merging sensor data, identifying threats, tracking multiple targets, filtering noise from electronic warfare, and prioritizing engagements in real time. Every one of those tasks happens automatically in Tempest's cockpit. In Russia's older fighters, Su-30SMs, Su-35s, MiG-29 variants still forming the backbone of the fleet, pilots juggle those demands by hand while also trying to maneuver, communicate, and survive. Even in Russia's cutting-edge Su-57, the avionics are an upgraded version of a system designed for a generation that never had to fight a cognitive war. This is the crack Tempest exposes immediately. Russia doesn't have a combat architecture capable of handling data at the speed the next war will generate it. Tempest didn't reveal that Russia was a step behind. It revealed that Russia is trapped in a combat model that cannot survive the next evolution of air warfare. Russia's pilots aren't just slower than Tempest, they're outnumbered inside their own cockpits. Tempest pairs a human with an onboard AI that handles the data war in the background, turning the pilot into a strategist instead of a stressed out operator. Russia has no equivalent system. Even on the Su-57, the pilot remains the bottleneck, forced to interpret fragmented radar returns, electronic noise, and multiple threat vectors in real time. Tempest eliminates that burden. It doesn't replace the pilot, it amplifies them. Threats are identified before the pilot even looks at the display. Jamming patterns are analyzed before a Russian aircraft would notice them. Priorities are updated automatically without hesitation, without fatigue, without error. Russia's fighters simply cannot run at this tempo. Tempest fights at machine speed. Russia still fights at human speed. This is the second fracture Tempest exposes. In the next generation of air combat, survival belongs to whoever thinks faster, and Russia cannot accelerate the human brain. If you're enjoying this deep dive, please like the video and consider subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us bring more global insights. Now, back to the video. Tempest's real power isn't in the jet itself. It's in the fact that it never flies alone. Its AI is built to command loyal wingmen, autonomous drones acting as scouts, decoys, missile trucks, and electronic warfare platforms. One Tempest becomes a multi-asset strike package the moment it enters the battle space. Russia has no answer to this. Not in doctrine, not in technology, not in industry. This is where Russia's limitations become unmistakable. The Su-57, Russia's pride project, was designed to be a stealth fighter, not a command hub for autonomous teammates. Its avionics architecture doesn't support multi-asset AI control. Its data links aren't built for high volume, low latency communication with autonomous drones. Its weapons doctrine never accounted for the idea that a pilot could command an entire robotic formation. Meanwhile, Tempest's architecture expects drone teammates from day one. And Russia's attempts at swarm technology reveal the real problem. The Shahid modifications Ukraine reported are basic autopilot upgrades, not tactical intelligence. The UAV swarms demonstrated in the 2020 Kavkaz exercise were limited to reconnaissance. They lacked coordinated maneuvering, sensor sharing, or combat roles. Russia's industrial base cannot mass produce advanced autonomous drones in the quantities Tempest Doctrine requires. This isn't a gap Russia can close with software patches or a new radar. It's a structural disadvantage, a doctrinal and industrial failure. While Tempest turns one pilot into the center of a thinking, self-adjusting combat network, Russian fighters remain isolated platforms struggling to maintain situational awareness under modern electronic pressure. 
This is why Tempest terrifies military planners in Moscow. Not because it's a sixth generation fighter, but because it changes what a fighter is. It makes Russia's entire Air Force concept obsolete. Tempest doesn't fight Russia's aircraft one-on-one. -on -one. It overwhelms them with a battlefield Russia has no equivalent for. And that's the advantage Russia cannot copy, cannot counter, and cannot deny. The danger of Tempest isn't just what it controls, it's what it knows. Britain's iSankey system, the heart of Tempest's sensor fusion network, creates a unified battle space picture so clean and so fast that the pilot sees the entire fight before Russia even understands what's happening. This isn't radar, this isn't infrared, this isn't passive detection or data link chatter. It's all of it fused together into one synthetic truth the moment it appears. Russia has nothing close. In Russia's fighters, every sensor is its own island. Separate radar modes, separate warning receivers, separate targeting displays, separate infrared cues. Even with modern upgrades, the pilot must bounce between these inputs while trying to stay alive. The result is predictable. Fragmented awareness, delayed recognition, and slower reactions in a fight where milliseconds decide outcomes. Tempest removes that bottleneck entirely. I Sankey merges everything. Radar, lasers, passive sensors, infrared, electromagnetic signatures, even data-linked ground and satellite feeds into one coherent stream. The pilot isn't guessing where threats might be. The system shows them exactly how the battle is unfolding, including enemy movements Russia's own aircraft can't detect. And Russia's radar reality makes that dominance even deeper. Decades of underinvestment left Russia with three major structural weaknesses. Radar blind spots, Ukrainian forces documented multiple cases of Russian aircraft flying blind against low-altitude drones, cruise missiles, and EWU interference. The vaunted Russian radar net cracked under pressure from even modest electronic disruption. Siloed information flow. Russian fighters cannot seamlessly pool sensor data across platforms. Their data links are limited, often unreliable and easily jammed. Tempest, by contrast, thrives on multi-platform data. Vulnerability to modern electronic warfare. The spiderweb operation in 2025 didn't just destroy aircraft. It revealed that Russian radar modes collapse when exposed to coordinated EDW attacks. Tempest is explicitly built to fight inside that kind of electronic chaos. This is because Tempest Russia cannot counter with new missiles or upgraded jets. Information dominance isn't a weapon you shoot down. It's a battlefield environment you either master or die inside. The Su-57 may claim 360-degree awareness, but without true sensor fusion, those numbers are marketing, not capability. Tempest pilot sees the actual battle space. Russia's pilot sees scattered pieces of it. One fights with a complete map, the other fights with fragments, and the side that sees the whole picture wins long before the first missile leaves the rail. In June 2025, the Spiderweb EW operation didn't just hit Russia with drones and missiles. It exposed a deeper flaw Russia has tried to hide for years. Its aircraft cannot function when the electromagnetic spectrum turns hostile. Spiderweb wasn't a massive bombing campaign. It was a coordinated electronic ambush. Dozens of Russian aircraft, Su-34s, Su-35s, even frontline Su-30SMs, lost situational awareness almost instantly. Radar ghosts appeared everywhere. Legitimate targets vanished, data links dropped, and pilots were forced to rely on gut instinct in a battle space designed to overwhelm instinct. The result was catastrophic. Over 40 Russian aircraft were damaged or destroyed in a matter of hours, not by superior fighters, but by the collapse of their own electronic environment. That operation delivered a message Tempest takes to its logical extreme. Russia cannot survive a fight where machines decide faster than pilots can think. Tempest is engineered for that world. Russia's air force is exposed by it. EW chaos, the thing that crippled Russia, is where Tempest is most comfortable. I Sankey thrives under interference because it processes disturbances as additional data, not as failure points. Its AI analyzes jamming patterns, identifies emitters, and isolates the source. Russia's radar systems, by contrast, interpret EW as confusion, not information. Spiderweb proved this in real time. Russian radars misclassified decoys as threats. Real threats disappeared from their scopes. Navigation systems drifted under coordinated spoofing. Cockpits overflowed with unusable data. Communication channels collapsed exactly when pilots needed them most. Even Russia's most advanced platforms offer no escape. 
The Su-57's avionics can filter basic interference but not organized multi-vector EW assault. Its combat brain automates tasks. It does not reinterpret the battlefield. Tempest does both simultaneously. By the time Russia stabilizes its sensors, Tempest has already mapped the electronic layout, identified the gaps, and assigned its loyal wingmen to exploit them. In any EW heavy engagement, Russia is locked in a losing cycle. It needs stable radar to fight, and Tempest is engineered to ensure that stability never exists. The Ukraine war revealed the truth Russia hoped no one would extrapolate. If its aircraft fall apart under Ukrainian EW pressure, they will be annihilated in a Tempest battlefield designed explicitly to weaponize that chaos. Tempest's most dangerous advantage isn't the AI it launches with, it's the AI it evolves into. Unlike Russia's fighters, which depend on hardware upgrades and scarce avionics production, Tempest's combat intelligence is modular. That means every improvement in software, every new algorithm, every refined decision model instantly upgrades the aircraft without redesigning a single circuit. Russia cannot compete with that kind of growth. Tempest architecture allows continuous AI training, offline simulation refinement, and real-time adaptation to new threats. As the system encounters unfamiliar radar signatures or evolving electronic warfare patterns, it updates. Not in years, not in the next production run, but in the next software patch. Russia's fleet is frozen by comparison. Most of its aircraft rely on avionics that cannot be significantly upgraded without rebuilding hardware. Sanctions have crippled the supply chains needed for advanced processors, and even the Su-57's AI-assisted systems are locked into a fixed architecture that cannot match Tempest's pace of evolution. This is the widening gap. Tempest improves automatically. Russia stagnates automatically. Tempest is designed for constant acceleration. Russia is designed for periodic repair. And that asymmetry becomes lethal the moment both sides take off. Sixth generation warfare isn't about airframes. It's about processors, software pipelines, microelectronics, and autonomous systems built at scale. And that's the battlefield where Russia has already lost. Russia's aviation industry cannot produce the hardware Tempest requires. Not the sensors, not the processors, not the high-density computing modules, not the AI-optimized chips, not the networking architecture needed to run a loyal wingman ecosystem. Sanctions have suffocated Russia's supply chain for advanced semiconductors, leaving its aerospace sector dependent on imported components it can no longer reliably obtain. Even before the Ukraine war, Russia struggled to produce modern avionics in meaningful quantities. After 2022, the bottleneck became permanent. Tempest, by contrast, is being built inside a multinational industrial infrastructure. Britain, Italy, and Japan. Countries with high-end electronics industries, stable logistics, and access to cutting-edge fabrication. Its loyal wingmen rely on technologies Russia cannot replicate at scale. Secure data links, autonomous control cores, and sensor fusion hardware designed for high-throughput computation. This is the industrial crack beneath the military surface, and no tactic, no upgrade, no doctrine can compensate for a manufacturing base that simply cannot build the tools a sixth generation battle space demands. Tempest exposes Russia's strategic limit. It can design modern concepts, but it cannot mass produce the future. For years, Russia built its military posture around a single assumption that its air force could challenge NATO for control of the skies. Not defeat it, but contest it, hold it, survive it. That belief shaped Russian doctrine, Russian propaganda, and Russian confidence. Tempest destroys that assumption before it even flies. Russia's entire air strategy is built on legacy logic. Fighters operate as independent platforms, radar networks provide fragmented targeting support, Pilots make most combat decisions. Electronic warfare is a temporary disruption, not the core battlefield superiority comes from numbers and missile range. Tempest invalidates every one of those pillars because the future Tempest represents AI-driven decision cycles, loyal wingmen as force multipliers, software-defined warfare, and machine speed battle space awareness is a world Russia's current force cannot function in, let alone dominate. The myth collapses here. Russia's Air Force was never designed to fight a system like Tempest. It wasn't built for. Drone-coordinated strike packages, fully fused battle space intelligence, self-healing data networks, EW-optimized engagements, AI-managed tactical flow. 
Its pilots are trained for a world where air combat is still aircraft versus aircraft. Tempest redefines it as ecosystem versus ecosystem, and Russia doesn't have an ecosystem. It has isolated fighters with mixed avionics, inconsistent modernization, and a doctrine written for a previous generation of war. This isn't a temporary disadvantage, it's a structural dead end. Tempest exposes that Russia's air superiority narrative wasn't a strategy. It was a story Moscow told because the alternative was admitting the truth. Russia cannot compete in the next generation of air warfare, not technologically, not industrially, and not doctrinally. The arrival of Tempest doesn't tip the balance. It reveals the balance was never even. So now the question becomes impossible to ignore. What happens when a sixth generation ecosystem meets an air force still fighting with fifth generation assumptions? Tempest didn't defeat Russia. It exposed the reality behind the myth. It showed that the next war won't be won by pilots or airframes, but by AI speed, sensor fusion, and autonomous teammates. And Russia doesn't have any of that. So when the future arrives, how does an air force built for yesterday even survive? If you found this analysis valuable, please consider subscribing to our channel for more deep dives into geopolitics. We would love to hear your thoughts. Drop your comments below and let us know what you think. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.